Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to put together this plastic robotic fellow that goes by the name of Lazarus. As you can tell by looking at the box, this is a model for the game Malifaux by Weird Games. On the back of the box we find a digital rendering of Lazarus, and that's all. I don't suppose we really need much else. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. These are probably the most securely packaged sprues that I've ever seen. I do feel this kind of packaging is a little bit excessive and a bit wasteful, but there's no doubt that it really does hold everything securely and safely in place. The parts on those very well packaged sprues are really quite nice. All the parts are very neatly moulded, error free and have minimal mould lines. Also included is this flexible blue hosing stuff, a plain old 40mm lipped base, and this stat card with some rules and obviously stats on the model. I'm not sure if this is current for Malifaux or if there have been changes. And finally, there is this very helpful exploded diagram to help guide us in the assembly of this model. Let's get this thing built. Wisely paying attention to the notes on the instructions, I begin assembly by taking this axle thing, I guess you would call it, for the model's legs and gluing it to the front part of Lazarus's torso. Be sure to get it right in the center. I then glued in the head. I guess you could probably leave this part unglued so that it moves, though I don't really see any benefit in doing that myself. There's not a whole lot of movement here, but make sure that you're happy with the position of the model's head before the glue sets. The ball joints on the arm parts will need a fair bit of cleanup because this is where the sprue gates connect to the part itself, which I think is probably the best place for that. It's not hard to clean the part up. It can then be glued into place. Pay attention to how you position this part. It will influence how the entire arm assemblies look later. You may find it easier to attach the rest of the arm before this step so you can be sure it will look how you want it to. Though it wasn't a huge concern for me. Then the back of the torso can be glued into place. I found I had to hold this together quite firmly to minimise gaps. The gaps will be most noticeable at the top of the shoulders, but that's okay. He does have similar gaps in his armour like this, so it's not entirely out of place at all. But you still don't want the gaps to be too big. I then assemble the legs. They have a kind of hinge joint which allows you some freedom in how you bend the leg, which is nice. They're held together with this plastic pin. I like this because it allows you to leave the joint unglued and adjustable until you're satisfied with its position. The pin is quite a tight fit. I couldn't get it in without using a small pair of pliers. I quickly test fit it on the assembled torso to see how it will look but I don't glue it into place just yet. To finish the legs, I attach the feet. These go on quite easily, though you can't really adjust the way the foot sits on the leg part. That's not too big a deal for me though. Once the glue on these was dry, I drilled a hole in each of the feet into which I can insert a brass rod. This will help when painting and when the model is attached to a base. I then move on to the arms. The elbow joints are the same as the knee joints, nicely adjustable and held together with a pin. I quite like this method. Of course, it's not really something that will work with anything except robots. Fortunately, this is a robot. All of the pins had a tight fit and needed to be pressed in with pliers. This would probably be much less effective if the pins were loose though, so it's a good thing. I think the arms look quite good. I fiddle around with the positioning of the arms and legs, and when I've got an idea of how I want the model to look, I glue the parts into place, starting with the legs. I adjust the position of the knees until I'm happy with them. It would be nice if there was a bit more movement possible with the hip ball joint. Unfortunately, that part isn't actually a ball joint. I can't complain too much about that though. I then secure the knee joint with glue. For the arms, I kind of reversed this process. I applied glue and then worked it into the joints by moving it back and forth a few times before leaving them in the position that I want. We aren't quite finished here. There are still a few more details to add, starting with these armor plates that go just above the hip joint. This part was a bit tricky for me to get into place with my fat fingers, so I used tweezers. Next, there are some armor parts for the shoulders. These are quite easy to glue into place. The armor for the right shoulder is larger than the one for the left. Next, I add the flexible blue hose parts. I'm not entirely sure if the plastic cement I've used on these parts is the correct glue, but it's stayed bonded so far. The cover on the back of the torso for these hoses is pretty clever and is easily glued into place. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm glad they didn't just cast this as part of the torso. The hose on the arm was a little bit fiddly to attach, but I got it there eventually. Finally, I super glue some brass rod into the feet. Once the model has a nice base, this should allow him to be held securely in place. It will also function as a kind of handle for painting. That's it. One Lazarus completed. I really like this model. This is only the second plastic Malifaux kit that I've assembled, but it certainly won't be the last. I really enjoy these models. I still don't have a full crew for Malifaux, but I will slowly but surely get one together and eventually be able to play the game. This model was very quick and easy to assemble. Unfortunately, I forgot to time myself. It only took about 20 minutes I think at the most. I quite like that the arms and legs are able to be positioned in a variety of ways. It's not something I've seen in a lot of wargaming miniatures, and it's pretty cool. I think I will probably paint this model pretty soon, just as something a little bit different to painting tanks and World War II stuff. Variety is good. 
What do you guys think? Have you built this model? Any interest in Malifaux? I'd like to see your comments and questions in the comments section below on Facebook or Twitter. Links are in the description. If you haven't already, it would be awesome if you subscribed to my channel and stuck around. Do check out some of my other videos. A couple of recent ones are conveniently located on the screen now. Thanks for watching. Farewell.